Welcome to Land Academy. I'm Jack Butella. I'm Jill DeWitt. We show you how to buy real estate for half of what it's worth. And sell it on the internet really fast. We, we are, are Jack, Jack and Jill, and this, and this is, is the Jack, Jack and Jill, Jill Show, show too. too. With over 15,000 completed transactions, we're the experts at acquiring property. Of all kinds, not just land. For half price and flipping them for way more. All right, let's get this show started. Jack Butella with Jill DeWitt. Hi. Welcome to our show today. In this episode, Jill and I talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of land investment. I might have been uh, watching too many Westerns lately. Before we get into it, Jill, let's uh, take a a question posted by one of our members on landacademy.com online community. It's free. Okay. I can It's this name. I always have a hard time with it. It's Khalil, I think. Khalil asked uh, on the mailers... Do you ever reply, or excuse me, do you ever remail to those that did not respond? Like, do you mail them two or more times to those prospects? Is it a waste of money? That's a good question because I see this in other uh, types of real estate where where some people hit prospective sellers, you know, with multiple offers, or actually they just do postcards. So, what are, what are your thoughts on this, Jack? Yeah, so this comes up a lot, especially with uh, with house investors for some reason. Um, mm-hmm. And I think it, the, the the origin of it is mailing people who have property, who have back taxes that are associated with it, or it's a foreclosure situation, or there's some kind of, you know, and we, if you listen to this show at all, um, you know that we don't do that. We mail just about everybody. If they don't have a mortgage on their property, that's the trigger for us. Mm-hmm. And by doing so, we get, we get the people who are maybe in foreclosure, and we get the people who have back taxes, but we mail everybody. So, you know, I, I, our companies have never done a follow-up mailer. So that uh, directly answers your question, but that's not to say it doesn't work. I, you know, I've heard of people doing it where you, you send out an offer the way that we suggest with a, that contains all the things that we suggest, the purchase price and a bunch of other stuff, and then send out a, um, a postcard maybe two weeks later that says, you know, Hey, I just want to make sure you got my letter because we really are serious about buying a property at that price. And I've heard good things. You know, mm-hmm. I guess if you buy one more property, you know, we'll try it. That's the answer. If you buy one more property because of that follow-up mailer, you're going to, you're going to, uh, way more than pay for the actual cost and expense and time and all that of doing it. So I've been thinking about that. I'm glad this question came up. I've, I've been thinking about changing up slightly what we do or trying a few new things based on the fact that it's what, whatever, 2016 now. So right. I'm glad this Almost came up. 17. Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. So 17 is around the corner. <laughs> yeah, it's always good to try new stuff. And I, I agree with you. I like it. If you're going to do something like this, I like your idea, Jack. Change it up a little bit. Don't send the same thing. You know, just hit them with the same thing twice. Make it a little bit, hey, just a follow up. You know, I am serious. And, uh, you know, if, let me know. So that's good. I guess what I'm saying is all the other rules still apply. You know, the printer that we're using now, which is a new one, uh, all of us in the group are using a new printer called LetterStream at a huge deep discount. They make it so easy to do the mail merge and so um, so mechanical. And so they, you can just keep track of the mail that you've sent and they, you can take out duplicates. There's a ton of reasons why now more than ever, sending up a, a follow-up postcard to the offer might make sense. So we, we will try it and obviously talk about it on the show. Yeah. Hey, if you have a question or you want to be on our show, reach out to either one of us on landacademy.com. Today's topic, this is the meat of the show, by the way, the good, the bad, and the ugly of land investment. And Jill asked me right before the show, what the heck is this all about? What should we be talking about? And I said, you know what? Why don't you just tell me what you think it is, and I'll tell you what I think it is, and we can laugh about the fact that it's probably not the same thing. (laughs) So what do you think it is, Jill? Uh, just, just, I think of this as just like the big picture, like, you know, this business as a whole, there's good stuff, there's bad stuff, there's ugly stuff. I mean, and that's the same with everything. So then I took it a step further and I thought, you know what, for me personally, this is where we, I know we're going to differ is it's just perspective. You know, what I think is good, somebody else thinks like, I hate that job, you know, and what, and then vice versa. Like, I like talking on the phone. That's not your thing. You're going to need to talk mm-hmm. to some people in this world, you know? <laughs> so, um, and paperwork. I hate paperwork. Yeah. You know, I hate, you know, that kind of stuff. I think you and I both agree on that, that 
when you're, but big deal. I'm doing a couple of deeds. You know, I'm not, I'm not in this business. I don't have a warehouse of inventory. I have to keep track of, you know, I can keep track of my, my business on a spreadsheet, you know, kind of thing. If that's all I have. So, um, and then, like I said, it's just kind of about perspective. What do you think, Jack? I think that there's a list, uh, you know, you can do a pros and cons list of every single thing on, on this planet. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think uh, I did a mental one when I wrote this title um, a while ago. And and when I got done with it, it only took just a couple of minutes. And I could not there. We are going to differ on this a little bit. There's nothing bad about this. And I hate when, you know, I really don't like when people say, well, there's just nothing bad about it. It's great. It's too good to be true. Come on. I'm always looking, you know, when I look at reviews on Amazon, I only read the one star ones. Great. There's oh, four. seriously? Yeah. I never That's read funny. The I, look at the, I look at the positive <laughs> ones and then I, and I weed out the negative ones. I, I glance at the negative ones and I think, oh, you're an idiot. You know, like, <laughs> you know, like, which is true because they say, you know, this, it was the, the blue was not as blue as I thought it was going to be. I mean, come on. <laughs> so, you know what I look for in the Amazon reviews? I don't want to get too sidetracked is, is, uh, you know, I, it, I, the item arrived and it didn't work. And if those are all the one star points, because I, chances are I'm going to get one that works, then I buy it. But if they say this worked great for two weeks and then it was just over, that concerns me a little bit. <laughs> anyway, funny. you know, honestly, there's um, only a couple things that are uh, that I don't like about this this land flipping business. And um, and you nailed it earlier. There, there, every business has them. There's paperwork <laughs> to everything. There's uh, shipping to everything. There's talking with customers. There's disgruntled customers with every single business that you have. Mm-hmm. The vast majority, ninety, I would say, ninety-five percent of the time, everything just goes great. And the, the, so, the more software applications that we release, you know, we're about to re- release a new version of uh, Landstay, our actual land selling website, and open it up to our members so they can post their own stuff on there. The more versions of software solutions that we come up with, the easier it is, and the more fun it gets. You know, right. You know, I had a I had a really interesting call um, with someone recently, and they were thinking about getting into our world. They are in our world now, and they asked me this question. I thought, gosh, that was so good. They said, "Who are the people that you see that don't that take this step and don't succeed?" I'm like, oh. That was a good one. And what was it? And well, I, I want to you know, know the answer to that. Yeah. And you know, and I said, Woo, that's a really good question. I love that. And honestly, it's the people that can't commit. And it's not that they can't commit. They just can't commit to anything, I think. It's in them. They think that there's a a magic, you know, something that's just going to happen. But no, it just like everything else, it takes work. And you have to work at it. You have to be diligent. You have to be proactive. You have to, it's like, you know, we joke, I can, I could give you all the, I can, I could get you all set up and everything and make your phone ring, but you got to answer the phone. You know, I, I can't do that for you too. Right. So that was my only thing. It's just the people that, you know, don't apply themselves, I guess, you know, and I thought that was a really good question because I've seen it. You know, I, here's my, and I, I, that's such a good question. You know, I, this is what I see for people that do well or don't do well in this environment. They have a little bit of experience already. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not saying that we, we have brand people who are brand new that just do great in this environment. But for mm-hmm. whatever reason, the majority of the people that I see come to Land Academy and the light bulb goes off over their, over their head and they say, this is it. Because over here, when I flipped this house, I had to do all this, you know. And this is a solution to that. And they see it that way and they say, man, if I don't ever have to go look at this property and I can hire people to do drone shots and stuff, boy, that takes all of it, all the the, the garbage out of it. You know, the stuff Mm -hmm. that the good, the bad and ugly is removed. That's my whole point Mm -hmm. of this, the whole show. I love it. For the stuff for me anyway. We have Jill and I, we have some contractor friends who love ripping apart the wall and seeing what's inside there and making it better. They love it. You know, they look at his cross-eyed like data. Why would you want to take all the fun out of this? If you never right. go see the asset, you just turn mark it up ten grand and then and uh, and and do the next one. What well, the heck fun is that? Mm-hmm. So, I agree with you. you know, that's not that's not my thing. 
Well, I love you're right. Having some experience. I love the SFR guys that come our way that, yeah. that when we start talking numbers and they start sharing with me, like, you know, yeah, I've lost a hundred thousand dollars on a, on a home and you and I have talked to people have lost a whole lot more, you know, doing a renovation. Remember that North Manhattan beach house? Yeah. Yeah. We're talking like a million, you know, this person oh, yeah. lost, like, you know, just, just doing it all wrong. <laughs> yeah. God, talk about scary. But there's so, a, lot yeah. of, a lot of moving parts in that. I mean, you could do everything right, price it right. And, and, uh, here's my, like, I'm going to list a bunch of things that really concern me, you know, okay. the good, the bad, and the ugly for me. Okay. You know, I'm not a designer. So let's say I do everything right. I buy the property, right. I, uh, get the right contractors, but you know, my design, the way that I choose the stuff that I choose for the kitchen is just, you know, right out of the eighties. Cause it probably would be, or maybe it looks like a log cabin somewhere and it's in Manhattan beach. You know, that's all not going to work. So oh, remi I <laughs> remind me when you're done, I want you to finish, finish this, but I have something really funny so, to share along those lines. That's why I have you, you know, cause I can do the back end of that, all, all that stuff. And then you can start, you can, you have to have women involved in some certain stuff. You know, I'm not, that, <laughs> there's just things that women are better at period. And I, you know, I'm going to get a ton of email for saying that, but it's just true. But anyway, okay. go ahead. Go ahead. Here's my funny story. So, so our neighbor went to a uh, Beverly Hills up in the, up on Mulholland Drive Christmas party the other night. Not kidding. They had a meet at a, like a parking lot and they bust, there was like 600 people. She works for an advertising agency, huge party, 600 guests um, at this home that they rented up in like whatever Beverly Hills area, you know, Anyway, so they they get there. She said she said I walked in and this home looked like every single seventies porn must have been filled <laughs> oh my here. Because oh <laughs> it was the design was that awful, you know, like yeah. like the black toilets, yeah. all all just too too white, you know, no color and anything anywhere. It was just she said it was hilarious. This this home and it was like grand staircases and all the stuff. It was just the funniest thing. So that's a good example. I mean, look at this home and what it's probably worth, but you know, she walked in and went, Oh, with the, with the design and the decoration, it was just so funny. So that was good. <laughs> hey, if you have a question or you want to be on the show, reach out to either one of us on landacademy.com or join us in another episode where Jack and Jill discuss how to use information. That's me. And inspiration, that's me. To get just about anything you want. We use it every day to buy property for half of what it's worth and sell it immediately. You are not alone in your real estate ambition. Yeah, so like, let's, I'm going to list a bunch of stuff, Joe. Okay. You tell me if uh, it's good or bad or ugly. Okay. I'll start with the obvious stuff you already mentioned. Paperwork. Bad. Oh, it's not even ugly? It's just bad. bad. Which is worse, bad or ugly? Ugly. <laughs> okay, then it's bad. Because <laughs> it's not ugly. It's not horrible. So, okay. Ugly, not not ugly like a hippopotamus ugly. I just mean like. Right. So It's uh, worse than bad. <laughs> cust customer service. Good. Because you data, can get. Data analysis. Good. Yeah. Um, software application development. Good. <laughs> That's what Why? I mean, because yeah. this is exactly what I went through. Yeah. I just like this. I, I couldn't find anything wrong with it, you know. And I think then I thought it's because I can't because it's because the bad stuff. I I we have systematically weeded it out. Mm -hmm. Like here's a great example. You and I flipped several houses and we renovated them. Remember that during the downturn? Yeah, I'm sure you remember. And it's like yeah. you know what? I never want to do this again. So we redivide. I devised a whole program where we just make ten or twenty grand on every house or. 10 grand on each house and leave it to the experts to develop the stuff. That's why there's nothing bad or ugly left in this. Mm -hmm. We've engineered it this way. Bingo. Information and inspiration to buy undervalued property. We, we are, are Jack, Jack and Jill, Jill and this was, was the Cash Flow from, from Land, land show. show. We are the experts at acquiring property of all kinds, not just land. For half price, just so we can flip it for way more. And really fast. Thanks for listening. You are not alone in your real estate ambition.